Let's talk about the pro-Palestinian protests we've been seeing on college campuses. Starting with Columbia University, because that's where it all began. Because, you know, around two weeks ago, the university's president was testifying before Congress and hundreds of students began occupying the campus's South Lawn, with them calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, demanding that the university divest from Israel, with eventually more than 100 of them being arrested. But also, despite being arrested as well as facing suspension, these protesters haven't backed down, and Columbia remains the epicenter of the movement. Where last night you had the university warning protesting students that they'd have it until 2 p.m. to disperse or they would be suspended, barred from campus and unable to finish the semester. But that deadline, it came and passed. Most students said that they weren't going anywhere. And in fact, some became bolder, with dozens barricading themselves inside Hamilton Hall. Though all of this is you have others arguing that there's a real element of anti-Semitism among some of the protests. And with that, you know, some protesters have been caught on camera making anti-Semitic remarks or violent threats. But at the same time, you also have some people trying to brand any protests of Israel or any support for Palestine as categorically anti-Semitic. But then also with that, there's this issue of the official and the unofficial protests. Right, with there being accusations of some some people being there just to cause trouble. In Boston, for example, Northeastern University police cleared an encampment Saturday after a shout of kill the Jews was heard. But this is a witness posted on social media that the shout actually came from a pro-Israel counter-protester. You also had school officials saying the demonstration had been infiltrated by professional organizers with no affiliation to Northeastern. And so at the end of the day, we've seen multiple clashing narratives and claims. But all of that also brings us to the police, right? Because in the past few days, we've seen them clashing with protesters more and more. At Emory University in Georgia a few days ago, Atlanta police made what some witnesses described as brutal arrest to clear an encampment there. Reportedly deploying rubber bullets and tear gas, one officer captured on video repeatedly tasing a man already on the ground. And at a California university this morning, police arrested 25 protesters who had occupied a building on campus for more than a week. This morning, we also saw police officers moving into an encampment at UNC, arresting students who refused to disperse. And all in all, at least 900 protesters have been arrested at pro-Palestinian demonstrations on college campuses in the last 10 days, with those arrests taking place on more than 20 campuses across at least 16 states. But despite the crackdowns, these protests are only growing. And in fact, the movement has seemingly spurred life back into student-led pro-Palestinian movements across the world. Pro-Palestinian protesters gathering over the past week on university campuses in Australia, Canada, France, Italy, and the UK. Columbia-style encampments popping up in places like this university in Paris, where university administrators also called in police to break up the sit-in after some students refused to leave. Right, and so part of this has a lot of people wondering if the only thing police are doing is escalating the situation. Right, because many other schools have experienced protests without arrests. Right, and with all these wild videos out there that we've seen, it may look like the country's campuses are evolving into battlegrounds. But notably, those have really just been the universities where the police have been sent in. And this is, you know, that's not the only option. At George Washington University, for example, police reportedly denied requests from the university to arrest protesters for trespassing, with them apparently concluding that taking enforcement action against a small group of peaceful protesters didn't align with the department's interests. And to that point, arrests made at the University of Texas at Austin may have been unlawful. Right, last week, 57 protesters were arrested by campus police, drawing praise from Texas Governor Greg Abbott. But local prosecutors actually dropped the charges due to what was described as deficient in the charging documents, right? And so ultimately, the universities have these difficult, messy situations in their hands. But as we watch this situation evolve, I gotta take a second to pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts with everything that we're seeing here?